that is coherent, which is podcast marketing, a similar session to what I did at PodCamp Boston, but with improved tools. My name is Christopher Penn. I'm the host of the Financial Aid Podcast, Chief Technology Officer at the Student Loan Network. I drink a lot of coffee. Um, if you are going too fast, there's coffee downstairs. Still drink a cup, but you'll be fine. All right. <laughs> Let's get started with um, some basics. Uh, we're talking about optimizing. Yeah. Audio people love it when I do that. We're going to talk about uh, some basics of optimizing and working marketing for your show so that you can do have more audience. And now it doesn't have to be you know thousands and thousands of people. You can have 100 people in your audience as long as 99, if you're a business podcast, as long as 99 out of 100 are buying things from you. Um, but if you have 10,000 people and none of them are doing anything, which is like what you get from Dig, that's not as helpful. Yeah. So strategy and tactics. Strategy is the why you do things. Tactics are the how you do things. We're going to talk a little bit about strategy and a lot about tactics. I'm working on four assumptions here. A, you have or will have a podcast someday. B, you want more listeners than just your mom. This is not a how-to podcast session. That was that's best left for other people. And um, the, no matter what marketing tricks you use. If your content sucks, this will not help. You'll get people and you'll lose them just as fast. So make sure that what you're doing is good. We have four goals in uh, decreasing orders of importance. The most important goal when it comes to marketing your podcast is to get evangelists. These are people who love your show so much. They tell their friends, they tell the people they hang flyers, they browbeat their audiences of their podcasters as well. Um, they are your unpaid marketing team, which is ideal. Below that, you have subscribers, people who are actively listening to the show every day and want to hear it. They want to hear it so much, they willingly allow you to give it to them by an RSS feed. You have listeners who are people who stop by uh, your website and stop by long enough to at least give uh, a show a listener part of a listen. And below that, the lowest quality but the easiest to get are visitors. You get them in the opposite order. The opposite order is exactly like it is here. Visitors turn to listeners, turn into subscribers. Ideally, those subscribers become customers if you're a business podcast and evangelists on top of that. So let's talk about visitors, how to get visitors, what you can do with your show. If you are familiar with a discipline called neurolinguistic programming, there is sort of three models of uh, how people learn, generally speaking. There are people who are visually oriented, there are people who are auditorily oriented, and there are people who are kinesthetically oriented. So people who have, need to see it to learn it, people who need to hear it to learn it, and people who need to do it in order to learn it. Podcasting, at least audio podcasting, is an A-channel discipline, which means that people are inherently interested in listening to what you have to say. When it comes to things like naming your show, naming your domain name, it has to be something that's auditorily understandable. For example, we all know of a certain photo sharing service, Flickr. It's missing an E in its name. So when you tell somebody, hey, go to Flickr.com, they will go to the wrong place because they're doing it by ear. If I tell somebody to go to accidenthash.com or inoveryourhead.net, you can probably go there and get there with a reasonable degree of success. If I tell you to go to themshow.com, you will get there with a reasonable degree of success. There's a service out there, no dig against it, it's a good service called Blueberry, without the E's. <laughs> At some point, you end up saying, okay, here's how you spell the name of the show. And if you were listening to Mitch's presentation this morning, your 30-second elevator pitch, um, if 15 of those 30 seconds are spent spelling the name of your show, um, you're missing the opportunity. So make sure that you are, your, your show and all your marketing materials are easy to hear, easy to spread by word of mouth. Second tactic is going to be search engine optimization. Julian talked a lot about that in his session. We're going to just briefly touch on some of the tools. Uh, podcast search engine optimization, same thing. Social networking sites, MySpace, Facebook. How many people here are using MySpace? Good. How many people have a podcast and are you marketing on MySpace? Okay. Smaller number. Facebook, anyone? Show of hands. Okay. Those two are the big ones. We'll talk about a little bit about each of them. Referrals, very valuable. Again, that goes back to evangelism and social bookmarking services. How many people here use Delicious? Okay, StumbleUpon. Okay, good. StumbleUpon and Delicious are the two that we're going to focus on talking about. So once you've got a visitor, you've, you've used various tools to get a visitor to your site, you have to convert them to a listener. There are a number of ways to do that. The easiest way is to give them as many choices as possible within reason to listen to your show. You need to have multiple channels and deliveries. If you just have an RSS feed, if I tell my mom, no, dig against my mom, hey, if my show's got an RSS feature, you'll look at me blankly and offer me another cookie. Um, that's, it's just not helpful. So things like iTunes, things like a Flash Player built right into your homepage. Let me see if I can tab out of here without breaking the presentation. I broke the presentation. <laughs> All right. 
What you want to have multiple calls to action, easy calls to action, and things that people are going to recognize. So for example, we have, we have iTunes, we have Winamp. There's, Winamp is a, a streaming and media MP3 player for the PC. 55 million users of it. Podcasting support in it is terrible, absolutely terrible. But if you can work your way into a, doing a one-click thing with it, it works really well. RSS, make sure that people have access to your MySpace page. Uh, Morpheus is one of the most popular file sharing programs online. Uh, among, at least among college kids, because <laughs> colleges and universities cannot block it. Um, it also has podcasting support built into it, which is very nice. So make sure you have lots and lots of different ways for people to take action to listen to your show. If I go to the other side of the screen here, uh, that did not work. Bug right. Make sure you have lots of different ways for people to listen to your show. That's how you convert them to a listener. You, get, you make it so easy. You make it one click. If it takes more than one click for someone to listen to your show, they're not going to listen to it. Make things like feed blitz. If you use FeedBurner, um, there are things where your RSS feed, your show's feed, can be turned into an email. This is surprisingly popular. 30% of my audience gets my show by email. Sir? I would guess putting the file inside of a PDF. I don't actually know. <laughs> I've not tried it yet, but now I'll. I know you can put video inside of PDFs, but I don't know if they're self-contained or if they need to be referenced somewhere. I'll have to try it when I get home. Turning listeners into subscribers is your next step. So once you get somebody to listen to the show, um, number one thing, of course, is going to be content. That's kind of a given. Make sure you have calls to action inside of your show because these are MP3 files for the most part, which means that people will share them. And that's what you want. But if there's no way to um, for them to know what, what is they're listening to or how to get to it, they, they'll listen to it. Oh, that was really cool, and not necessarily find you again. So make sure you say in your show somewhere, hey, you've been listening to the Financial Aid Podcast. Get more at financialaidpodcast.com, and they'll know what to do after that. Uh, again, making things one click as easy as possible. How many people here use the uh, podcast with iTunes? Okay, good. How many people have a one click subscribe on your button on your website if you have a podcast? Okay, where does it go? Uh, somebody raise hand. Tell me where that click goes. What happens? Uh, just pops open. Well, first of all, it loads up iTunes. If you mm -hmm. don't have iTunes already installed, then it prompts you to download it. Mm -hmm. uh, then it goes to the iTunes directory and right to your page where the listener can actually preview all the episodes and also subscribe. Mm -hmm. Okay. You just described what's a, uh, a, an HTTP link to the, uh, the URL says Phobos. Yep. something on Apple. Yep. That's sometimes good. Uh, so it's sometimes good because that uses Apple's directory, which has been known to lose podcasts, to uh, be significantly delayed. There's another way of doing it. Right. It's called ITPC. It's like HTTP, but ITPC instead. ITPC and then the uh, URL to your feed that will pop it directly into iTunes. Make it open up that way. I just, had, I just launched my podcast this week, and I had my, my, my guy put in PCAST and then that URL. And it does pretty much the same thing as the iTunes PC, and I'm just trying to figure out what the difference is. The difference is the PCAST was an older version of the ITPC handler. Either one works. Okay. Either one was, is fine. Now, one thing you can do to make it even easier is if, if you send somebody an ITPC link in email, it, it just shows up as text. If you send people an HTTP link in, your, in their email when you're marketing a show or when it's in your email signature, it auto hyperlinks. You've probably seen this in Gmail uh, and Outlook and things. It creates a link for you automatically just out of text. The way you do this is what's called a 301 redirect. Um, I should probably put, I'll probably put a link up on the wiki rather than actually delve into the syntax of how to do that here because, well, I haven't got a lot of time. Again, remember, when you're converting people from listeners to subscribers, it all needs to be a channel. It needs to be word of mouth things that people can remember easily. Remembering things easily when you turn a subscriber into an evangelist. If your show's URL, if your show's name is not easy for people to remember and, and spit back out to others, it's, they won't refer it as easily. They'll say, yeah, go to... Um, listening-to-my-show.com. No one's going to remember that, but listen to The M Show. Listen to Newcom Road. All these things are make it easy. Make you sharing your website super easy. Give tools. So have things like little chicklets. Say, hey, share my show. Give them the HTML to copy and paste in a little text box. Uh, a good example of this, let's see if we can make this work here. There's a website here called Bum Rush the Charts. Can I get to that side of the screen? No, we're good. All right. Worry about that later. 
there, on there is a little text box where people can literally highlight some HTML copy and paste it onto the MySpace page or whatever. Make it so easy for them. Give people a reason to promote your stuff. A great example is uh, PodSafe Bands. Um, I have a show about financial aid, which among other things sounds like the most boring thing in the world, and most of the time it is. But I do play a lot of PodSafe music uh, from different bands, and by promoting bands, by promoting their work to your audience, in return, more times than not, they will promote your work back. They will link back to you, which is a good source of inbound links. So if you're doing a show, you know, like a daily show or a weekly show, you can have all these other people linking to you. Make sure you leave comments on their MySpace page, on the band's MySpace page, so that their fans can find your show. I do this a lot with Uncle Seth. Stand up. I'm not standing up. It's too much effort. I gotta save my energy. <laughs> Make your show self-contained. If, you, if you, any of you ever used iTunes and played a, uh, an MP3 in there, there's things called ID3 tags. We'll try this again. ID3 tags are what is in this little info box here. Right, so you have name, field, and stuff like that, and you can specify all these things. If I pull up, let's see if we have... This is where, it, if someone's going to share this MP3 file just as it is, this, all this data goes with it. So make sure that you have your email address, your dial-in number, your incident messenger address, all this stuff goes in the ID3 tags. Tag it. Make sure that if you've got a tagline for your show, it goes in there. Can I suggest something? Yes. Another advantage that a lot of podcasters don't know about with ID3 tags is if you do them properly, you get picked up in things like Last.fm and, and the, uh, the, the Google Talk music plugin. Um, if you don't put these in, those things don't pick you up. So all those things are, are things that, that automatically create profiles and branding and extra tracking things. You can go to those things and enter a URL, and it's one more place that people can find you in some of these other services. So it, the, the upshot is there's, there's lots of good reasons to do this, and, and, and more than you might be aware of. Are you editing your ID3 tags in iTunes before you upload Yes, I am. ID3? Yes, I am. If you have a show logo, this is a great place to put it. It shows up as the album art when you're playing on an iPod, so it's a good chance for you to establish some more branding. You might say, I'm a podcaster. If I'm not a music podcaster, you're like, Jay, what in the world do I do with the lyrics tab? That's a great place to put all your show notes, so that somebody who takes this file and looks into it, they have all this stuff. It's, the, it's a self-contained show. It is easy for them to find stuff, to read about what's going on. This also, because it's metadata, gets indexed and things, so make sure it is uh, just as high quality as the stuff you post on your blog. Um, so let's talk about some tools. Let's talk about five tools that I like to use. Number one is a friend adder for MySpace. I'm a huge proponent of marketing on MySpace because, well, there's 150 million people on there. Somebody's got to listen to my show. Um, <laughs> trick is finding them. You can't just add people randomly. I mean, you can, but you'll get very, very low returns. So if we go into, uh, into MySpace here, <clears throat> ah. What I'm looking for, I'm going to have my cost to action. I wonder how to fix this. This looks really awful. All right, let's get past it. When you it in the upper left. Hmm? A little green circle in the upper left of your browser. Yeah. Thank you. You'd think I would know that being a technology person. <laughs> Looking, make sure you, your MySpace profile is robust, that's got your show in it, that's got your same calls to action that are on your um, blog and your web page if you have such things. Make sure you have a Flash Player. This one's by f uh, feedplayer.com. They will give it to you for free, and it allows people to have your MP3s right on the page. If you have videos on YouTube, this is a great place to put them. When it comes to looking for friends, though, on MySpace, that gets a little bit trickier. So there's a piece of software I really like um, called friendadder.com. And what it does is it lets you do demographic searches on MySpace for you know, what kind of people you're interested in. If there's a band that you like you want, and you want to recruit their friends, you can go after them that way. If there's a person on MySpace who is, uh, say, maybe a competitor, uh, if you're in a, doing a business podcast, recruit all their friends and, and add them as friends to you. <laughs> um, and this is a very handy way of automating the process. You can request up to 400 people a day on MySpace uh, to be added as friends. 
I do not advocate sending messages, like uh, sending messages or leaving comments without someone being a friend first, because to me, that's kind of going over the line into spam. Friend request is kind of gray list in my book. Yes, sir? When you put up your list of things to do, you can leave them up for a moment longer. Oh, yeah. Also, the, this whole deck is on the wiki. Oh, for the, yeah, it's, it's on the wiki, so um, again, if you feel like it's going by too fast, it probably is. That's, I, I apologize, but it is on the wiki. Okay, so how do you find people to add on to MySpace? This is a very good question, because you want to find people who are going to be interactive with your show. Previously, I used to do just sort of a general demographic search, like I'm looking for uh, men and women between the ages of 18 and 21, in the United States. That's college age, but most of them were not interested in what I had to say. Um, I ended up with a lot of bands, 29,000 friends, but very few of them were valuable. So there's two services, Technorati, uh, which you may or may not use, is a blog search tool, and um, Google blog search. So let's go. If you're doing a podcast and you have a topic matter, you need to think about what terms, what words that you use in your vertical that nobody else uses in light conversation. Like, for example, in financial aid, um, for those of you who are Canadian, uh, American financial aid is, for, is, is required because our government does not subsidize higher education to any great degree, which is unfortunate. Um, so let's look for the word FAFSA, which is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid in America. This is not a term that you would use casually. This is not a term that, you, you know, when you're hanging out with your friends drinking Saturday night, <laughs> you don't use this word. You only use this word in relation to financial aid, which means it is ideal for in my market. Technobody will give you people who are blogging using that term. You can see that. And here's one, a look at MySpace blog. All right. Here's the <coughs> MySpace URL. Now you know this is a person who is eligible to add as a friend, because they're blogging about it, so clearly they want to talk about it at least something. That's somewhat, so they might be more receptive to hearing what you have to say about it. Same with Google blog search. Let's do, here's people in Google who are talking about the FAFSA. That's me. You have people talking about it. Nice thing about Google, especially, if you look here, they put the friend ID right inside the URL. Go right back to your MySpace adder, and you can just uh, import a list of those and add them in. Yes, sir? Because uh, the uh, page you just showed is, is the regular Google, right? It's the regular Google. Does, does that search restriction there work in the, in the Google blog search, the actual blog at google.com? It does work um, because Google syntax is similar across right. all of its sites. However, there's one flaw with Google blog search that the main engine doesn't have. They don't give you the URL on the page. Right. Right. Uh, or not with the ones with friend IDs. If you want to be really, really evil about it, take the entire page and find and just, just all the text that has the friend ID. Right. You can script this process, obviously. And it gives you a list of all the friend IDs. Plug the whole list in <laughs> to your friend adder, and you're all set. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you sell that script? I don't sell it, but it, um, we actually will be giving it away. So. <clears throat> so that is, oh, yeah, I know how to use this. So that's Google, Technorati and Google Blog Search. It's a great way to pull down the people on MySpace who um, are interested in you. Now, the, with Facebook, Facebook is a different game entirely. Facebook, see, MySpace is nice because MySpace is indexed by Google like crazy. So you can leave comments on people's pages. There's a tool for that, by the way. And if you were talking, at, were listening to Julian's inbound links talk, um, leaving comments on MySpace pages is a great way to build lots and lots of inbound links very quickly um, with the keyword of your choice. Facebook is different because everything is behind a login screen, so Google can't see it. Um, what it is good for is finding people who are already your friends. If you use a service like LinkedIn, you can export all your contacts out of it, just the email addresses. Go to Facebook, say import my contacts, and now suddenly anyone who on LinkedIn is your friend, now they can become friends on Facebook. They can then help you proselytize and evangelize things like events. I think it's just the number one way to promote on Facebook. If you're talking about basic website search engine optimization, a program I really like is called Web CEO. And what Web CEO does is you point it at a, it's PC only by the way, so if you're on a Mac, you have to, uh, you have to run something virtually. 
you point it at any web page, it's free for up to three websites, and it'll tell you what you need to do to make your site rank better in major search engines, Google, Yahoo, MSN. This is Julian's page for uh, inoveryourhead.net. You can see he doesn't have the title tag in, in the header of the page with uh, those terms. In over your head, the hip hop podcast is not as close to the title as it should be. Description tag is missing, stuff like that. It, it gives you a recipe, a whole laundry list of how to improve your website, how to make it rank better. This is good. This is basic stuff that um, doesn't take a whole lot of work, and the rewards pay off because chances are, if you are in a competitive space, uh, just by doing these things alone, you will increase your convert. You will increase your competitive edge by about ninety percent. Um, Google Analytics. If you don't use that already, I won't demo that because it's a pain in the butt to get running. But it is just website statistics on crack. You can drill down to any level uh, and see what's going on. The last thing I want to talk about. Remember, we were talking. Uh, I can actually show the financially podcast webpage here. We were talking there we go, about calls to action. These things here, right? Now, how do you know which, what's most effective? What should you be promoting? There's a service that I found that I thought was really nice called Crazy Egg, which is a stupid name for a really good service. What it does, that's not right, is it will make you a heat map to show where on your site people are clicking. So what catches their attention? Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> iTunes, popular. Winamp, much more popular. RSS feeds, eh. Morpheus, waste of time. Uh, this is from a, before I start promoting it to uh, the Morpheus on MySpace, popular. Um, one thing that's not in here because this is a snapshot from a while ago is uh, if you have an MP3 link right inside your blog post, that's very, very hot because people say, oh, this is, I'll just click on it and that's what happens. This is where my flash player is on my site. People click on that all the time. Popular blog posts. Often enough, people click at the top here randomly. <laughs> <laughs> the nice thing is the entire header is a link back to the, the home page. They always get back to the home page um, about your stuff. So make sure this is a great way to see what's effective on your website and what is not. Yes, sir. Are you installing like a snippet of code? On There's a code the snippet. Yeah. Um, it's like Google Analytics. Exactly. Like exactly. Like it. If you use WordPress or any other blogging software, um, you can put it in the footer file and it'll it'll run automatically. What's it called? Again? It's, that's called Crazy Egg. Let me pull up that slide back up here. It's a paid service. Um, it is a paid service if you want lots and lots of uh, things, but if you're just going to do a quick hit, they will let you do a 14-day free trial. So make your website optimized as much as possible, then let it run until your, your trial runs out, and then if you're really evil, you sign up with a different email address. Um, <laughs> say that out loud. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, so Takeaways. Evangelists count the most. No matter what you're doing in terms of your efforts podcasting, having people who are working for you um, to promote your stuff is key because it reduces your workload. It keeps your sanity intact. Most of the tools, with the exception of the friend adder, are free or you know, free trials that you can manipulate, manipulate. Make your show easy to promote as many different ways as possible. And uh, give it a try. Here's the <coughs> recent advertisement. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Facebook has always traditionally been targeted at college students and in a lot of cases U.S. college students, although it's in Canadian. If that's not your audience, is it moving towards being broader? Yes, they opened up their entire uh, registration yeah. process to but anyone. But is, is it still, like, is that the core audience still, or is it... It's broadened quite a bit. Ever since they opened it up, they've had an influx of everybody who was fleeing MySpace. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yes, sir. A phrase in the for what? Oh, uh, my company. Um, actually, if you have any questions you want to ask that are financially related, there's a, the, the show number is there, but if it's not, just email me. Next. Yes, ma'am. I have a question about tags. Um, yes. I have a PC, and uh, well, one thing, I, I, I haven't seen any lyrics tab on it to put my show notes in there, and also, um, anytime I try to type science or podcast in the genre, it only gives me, in all the different tra tagging tools I've, I've, I've found, it only gives me different types of music. Okay. You mean Any for suggestions it? suggestions for uh, PCs? Well, iTunes is, is both Mac and PC. It should be that you have to right click on the song and get info, okay. and that's where it'll be. And but to create tags. Just type it in. Yeah? You know, okay. And we'll override what's already uh, in there. Are you talking about the category list? Yeah. Yeah, but you can you can um, uh, depending on the I, don't, uh, I use Winamp, 
Yeah. And I know in Winamp, at least in the in the ID three two tag, you can type in. You can, but then it doesn't transfer back over to ID three. No, but, and it doesn't because the ID uh, ID two yeah. one whatever the old version is fixed and it's only music. There's no way to change that. Okay, but the two you can save it in two. Yeah. It'll save it to you, it, it, but you can't, you can't, so, so there's a category list in one, you can just leave it blank, or yeah, you yeah. can pick something randomly, yeah. but you can put podcast, you can put whatever you want in, okay. in the category in the other one, and it'll save I forgot to mention something, you reminded me of tags, I'm going to cover this really, really quickly because it's really, really important. There is, there are two services, Delicious and StumbleUpon, both are important. There's two extensions for Firefox, the browser, Delicious and StumbleUpon, unsurprisingly. When you're doing Delicious work, make sure you select as many relevant terms as possible. Uh, a great way to do this is do a page uh, keyword density count on your page. There's one at uh, if you go to seochat.com. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. Let's see keyword density right there. Since delicious is driven entirely by spaces, we'll just do one of these, and then I get to put in a capture that looks nonsensical. What the hell is that? <laughs> I think that's a refresh. I think that's a refresh, absolutely. <laughs> that's so much better. So if you don't know what to tag a page inside the delicious, you use a keyword density tool like this. And what it will do is tell you what the top terms on your page are, copy this whole list into your delicious tag. Okay, that way it's, 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 it'll save your sanity. Second thing is stumble upon, which is even more important. You, got, you go to stumbleupon.com, sign up for it, and you get this cute little free toolbar right here, right? You can, t you can tell it, I like this page, you know, I want to recommend this page. When you do, copy and paste all your stuff, pick uh, the relevant tag here. They allow up to five different tags here. Make sure they're all relevant. So iTunes, iPod, podcast, things like that. No is a good thing for adults. StumbleUpon is kind of like a peer-to-peer -peer random stumbling around of stuff, but instead of like a site like Delicious where it's just the entire internet, if you tag things, the people searching just in those tags or categories will find your page. And I literally mean you can quadruple your traffic this way. Yes, sir? Chris, can you explain why the IT the ITP link for one thing is shorter. The number, the number two thing is that it doesn't go through the iTunes Music Store. Um, the iTunes Music Store, when it comes to podcasts, can lose episodes. I've had episodes delayed for up to a week in there. So in my case, I have a daily show, and I don't want people missing five days of my stuff. Cover, that's a personal cover, preference. Coverville, which is a huge show, always falls in and out of iTunes. Yes. And that's a great example, and, and he's given up on folks like this. It's still working for him. Yeah, it's, it's a pain in the butt. Sir, okay. Another tool no, that uh, I've kind of fallen in love with recently is uh, my blog blog. Yes. I, I mean, I find it way more, far more accurate than Technorati. Like, lately, Technorati is missing a lot of stuff that my blog blog is picking up on incoming links. So it's a great way to network, too. You go there and you follow a lot of them. Yeah, there's also, um, if you are, here's, here's an, an unpleasant secret about Web 2.0. Oh. Web, web 2.0 is Web 1.0. Um, it's still the same mechanism, HTTP post and get. Um, which means that as long as you know how to manipulate HTML forms and things, you can do anything you want to somebody's website. My blog blog is a good example. Podshow Plus is another good example. Um, you can add every single person on that service to be a friend of yours if you wanted to. I think it's just scripted with, uh, with curl. Um, I haven't gotten too much into it yet because I'm busy with other stuff, but it's a great way to do it. I like.com, the music recommendation service. You can add every single person on there as your friend, and they don't have any uh, restrictions against that. Yeah, I noticed that like there's a few people gaming my blog blog like just you know, spamming their friends or whatever. But I think Google just bought them like a month ago. Did they? Yeah. Okay. So I mean, there's obviously yeah. Yahoo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, no, just stretching. Okay. Well, it's three forty-five. Yes, sir. No, one last thing is yes, sir. Uh, when you were talking about last FM, uh, okay, it was talking. Oh, <laughs> someone was talking about last FM too. Um, that one's particularly good in this case because you'd be able to, like people are listening to your show automatically, and then since Last of Them already creates, they sort of create this community for your show, you start to get um, people who 
like visit that page for your show and all of a sudden start conversations there as well. Mm -hmm. So you just sort of build a small community from. And, and if you're if you're pretty hardcore, you can start a label in Last FM, and you can upload your episodes into Last FM so they end up in. You can stream them right off that site. I, I've never done that for podcasts, but I've done it for music, uh, only because the, the the number of podcasts is relatively small. But the thing with Last FM, it's a re it's a music recommendation service, and there's others like it, but that's that happens to be my favorite. Um, it, it works the same as like the Yahoo Music Engine, but you can control what you put up there, and your pages get created automatically as soon as, some, as soon as the first person ever listens to you that has the plugin, you'll have a page. I'm sure there's a Christopher Penn page. There's financially podcast, of course. So so uh, so that's the other good reason to do your ID free text properly because it'll it'll add it'll keep adding episode names. Like I, there's a Jay Muna one, and it's actually a combination of podcasts and music. Mm -hmm. Uncle too. Some you know it'll be a mix of songs and podcast names. But the, the cool thing is, as long as you keep your name consistent, then it'll just add all that stuff on there. So someone who's coming there for, for music might go, oh, they have a podcast too, and they'll, they'll go and find it or, or, or look at the site. Yep. Last, last one. Um, one other thing about the last FM, if uh, you have like a music podcast where you play music on your show, uh, one cool thing that you can do is there's a function called a journal, which is like a blog post, and it has something in it called the uh, artist tags, and you can highlight uh, parts in your show notes of like an artist that you've played, and tag it. And what it'll do is um, if someone reads your journal, they'll be able to click on that artist tag and go to that artist link. But on the other hand, if um, uh, on the artist's page, it'll show journals that uh, ha are tagged with that artist. So for example, if someone's like looking for Uncle Seth and they see you know, your podcast play them, uh, they'll be able to go to your podcast be, you know, and maybe they'll check it out because they're they like Uncle Seth and then they could all like your too. Yeah, it's automatic reciprocal link, so as soon as you link to the artist, it shows up on their page and that's where it's, yeah. so it's, it's I don't know how effective it is, but it might not. We'll give hey, it a try. Yeah, you want to see you play this. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, give, we'll, we'll give it a try and hopefully at the next podcast we'll have more some results to talk about. All right, that's going to do it for this session. Um, I'm back in here at 4 o'clock, so if you just want to hang out, that's fine. But uh, officially we are over. Thank you for showing up. Thank you.